Hey guys, Pixel here. Just wanted to let you know, in the event you want to try and start your own podcast, Anchor FM is the way to go. It has the creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It has everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you, so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, but many more as well. Ultimately, it is free, so it's no cost to you. So go ahead and download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. All right, and welcome to another episode of Two Guys, One Level, where you can catch the latest games, the latest news, the latest rumors. I'm your host, Tortuga, accompanied by Pixel. Welcome back, everybody. Pixel actually uh, surprised us with a guest this week. Pixel, take it away. Hey, everybody. So uh, I am a big fan of music. I know we've mentioned it from just uh, us um, and games in the music world. But today we are actually joined um, by one of... Uh, Honestly, I'm really not just guessing it up here. Uh, one of my favorite artists, Substantial, uh, along with his daughter as well. So, guys, welcome to the uh, channel today. Yeah, thanks for having us. Thanks yeah, for having thanks. us. So, you know, we it's actually funny. Uh, episode, I believe it was 17, uh, Tortuga actually, uh, you know, gave us a question on, you know, what's something that you would introduce uh, in particular, my daughter too. Um, and then we have Substantial's daughter here, uh, who actually has her own YouTube channel uh, that he actually makes an appearance on. So why don't you uh, go and tell us a little more about that today? Yeah, yeah. So uh, I'm here with my daughter, Serenity, who goes by Peace Gamer Ren. Yeah. Um, and for the longest, she's been talking to my wife and I about um, her desire to start her own YouTube channel. And so... Um, I think right before the pandemic, uh, it was back last year, right? Like December. I feel like it. Yeah, it was around December. I think. Yeah. So we uh, we have a um, a bunch of friends who are gamers as well, and uh, one guy in particular had a lot of experience with um, live streaming. And so we, he came through um, our office and basically gave us a tutorial on you know what we needed to do to start um, live streaming streaming so we could get our channel up. Yeah. Um, and then uh, my wife had this idea um, that once she started her channel, like us possibly introducing like a show slash series where um, I would pop up from time to time on the channel. Yeah. Um, and she called it yeah, you know, game night. Right. And so like it would be like we were planning on like doing it on YouTube and Twitch. Mm -hmm. But like since I'm starting out on YouTube, we're um, mostly doing it on there. And so like it's a stream where like. We pick out like a, a random game that I already own, and then we just see how usually we do. one she's way better at than I am, you know. <laughs> and, um, that's true. Yeah, that's usually how they do. They always trying to take over, <laughs> right? And then I proceed to get mopped up for about an hour, you know, and uh, it's pretty entertaining. So you know, I mean, it's it's uh, how we usually um, kind of spend time and, and bond over the weekend um, through games or um, anime and yeah. stuff like that. So. So yeah, it's that's pretty cool. Yep, and know? then watching some comic movies. Oh yeah, yeah, you plenty, plenty of those as well. You know? <laughs> yeah, I was actually, uh, you know, when uh, yeah, your dad and I were actually talking about it last night. We asked for some links, uh, and actually took a look at it, and she, uh, she, she really ha kind of handed to you in some Super Smash Brothers that I oh, saw yeah. there, man. Oh my god, it's in, right. <laughs> it's embarrassing, man. Listen, the the crazy thing is, so so we have two pro controllers now, but prior to that, um, she was just using you know the the, the switch control, the Joy Con, mm -hmm. and um, and and even with drift, like even with like the drift is just yeah. terrible, and she still is still destroying me, bro. Like it's that's it's, how you know I've been playing for a long with, time. Yeah, she even with the handicap, I'm getting like, mocked <laughs> up on a regular basis. Well. To be fair, Tortuga does the same thing to me. He usually picks games that he's great at, and then right. he just – just so he can mop the floor with me. So I completely understand, man. <laughs> That's just false. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, don't think I don't remember those Halo days, man. <laughs> All right, you know what? Let's move on. It's not about me. Right. <laughs> And um, <laughs> we were also taking a look here. Um, what's uh, what's this about that you sent me? Renane is that the name of the game? 
Oh yeah. So Renane, um, what was it was, um, I thought I sent you the playlist, but I might've just sent you the link for that one game. Um, but yeah, Renane is a game that was, it's a retro style game that was crowdfunded. Um, I want to say about two years ago. Um, maybe, yeah, maybe three, two, um, two years ago, we'll say. Um, and, uh, I'm friends with the, uh, the guy who scored it. Um, and he reached out, we, we met at, um, anime USA in DC and, um, you know, I was uh, just hanging out with Asheru, the brother who did the um, opening song from the Boondocks, and our, our homie wow. uh, DJ A Rock, and uh, we were just chopping it up, man. Like uh, just you know talking about the convention, and then he mentioned doing some music with us, um, and so he came back out for um, what was it? I think um, oh my god, what was it over at um, at National Harbor? Um, you mean what? Which uh, Magfest? Magfest. Yeah, he, yeah. He came through for Magfest. We hung out some more, and then we started uh, working on me doing a remix um, for that particular uh, the the music from that game. So he just gave me all the session files, all like twenty plus session files, and um, and I just did what I did um, and added some verses to it, man. And uh, and, and it was a lot of did. fun. Yeah, yeah. It was uh, fun. Thank you. Appreciate it. And the song. <laughs> 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 yeah, so yeah. that's how that came about, and they um and that was their second time trying to crowdfund it. Uh, the second time around, they knocked it out the park. Man, um, was able to uh, more than double what they uh, what they were asking for. Okay, so it was supposed to come out on the uh Nintendo on the Switch. Switch. Yeah, but um, you know, it's been been a slow process, but like, you know, excited to see what happens when that finally drops. And so that's well, just. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no, no. That's actually very exciting to hear. Uh, the Switch, I think, is a fantastic uh, indie platform. Um, so it's definitely great to see about about that. Um, on top of that, uh, I know you were also working on something for Cowboy Bebop. Uh, so what's going on there? Yeah. So, um, so again, shout out to Mason Lieberman, man. Um, you know, he uh, he's um, he was senior game audio uh, manager for Tencent. Um, you know, which is like the biggest, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, we know, <laughs> yeah, so, you know, so the, and so, I mean, he, I was friends with him before that happened, but, uh, needless to say, that's not a bad look, <laughs> you know, but, um, not at all, <laughs> not at all. but yeah, man, he, he just hits me up and a bunch of folks on Facebook and was just like, Hey man, look, we're all like quarantined up, just like, can't go anywhere. Like, yo, let's make some music with, with some friends. And um, and he had this idea to do a a cover, like um, just a new arrangement of um, the Real Folk Blues uh, from Cowboy Bebop, the ending music. And uh, and, yo, he, you know, he reached out to me and uh, a lot of other people. And it ended up being over 40 musicians um, who wow. decided to wow. uh, contribute. And um, yeah, man, we put together this thing, and while we were working on it, once we got the rough, he he hit up Funimation. Funimation loved it, and basically was like, "Look, we're going to contact Sunrise, the the original oh, company that distributed yes. it, and um and they loved it, and was like, well, yo, look, we're we want to do something with it too, but we're going to uh contact Yoko Kano and see, you know, how she feels about it. The you know the composer of the Mm-hmm, uh, the original music from uh cowboy bebop and so she loved it and was like well hold up let me hit up the seat belts like every oh, time we hit up God. somebody they were like let us hit up someone it's else the domino effect. exactly and so so yeah man she hits up the seat belts and then they all filmed themselves like uh uh and recorded themselves adding additional music to the cover and it just became like the snowball effect was crazy man in terms of how big it became and, and and all of that came together in a month, right? That's what's really insane. Like it was a month worth uh, worth of uh, work and just back and forth emails from us designing uh, to the homie Dallas uh, designing the cover art um, to me consulting because uh, I have a business uh, called Substantial Art Music where we consult a lot of creative entrepreneurs and stuff. Mm-hmm. So you know, midway through, I was like, "Look, man, because it's Cowboy Bebop." If we put this on vinyl, bro, like this could sell a lot of units, which would help us raise a lot of money for the cause. Because the goal was to raise money for um, the CDC 
and um, Doctors Without Borders uh, okay. with the, the COVID-19 crisis. And so, yeah, man, uh, we put it all together. Uh, we dropped it back in May. And since then, it's been doing uh, great. man, it, it has technically over 1.5 million views on YouTube, 1 million uh, from Funimation and then Anime Lab, which is like Funimation Australia. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, uh, has a, a half a million views, and then um, it hit number one on the rock charts on uh, for Amazon uh, Japan uh, for digital sales. It uh, hit the Billboard charts. It actually was number six on Billboard for world um, uh, for world digital sales. And um, bro, it's it's, it's been a year, man. <laughs> that's that's insane when you think about yeah. it. I mean, so so you know, like, like I said, you know, even coming from anime, right. It's just it's just uh, amazing to see, especially Cowboy Bebop being one of the most beloved enemies out there. Uh, right. So to be able to take the that core, uh, you know, original music and then, you know, remix it, which is definitely something great to see. So I'm glad that that worked out. Um, and now I know you guys did mention it uh, earlier, but uh, Serenity, do you also watch uh, anime? Yeah, uh, mm, is that even a question? <laughs> right. <Yes>. right. All right. <laughs> I've just watched like I don't even know how many animes I watch, but like I like the first one I had to start off like was you know like your average like childhood show, which is like Hello Kitty, and then it got a little bit better. Like I think <laughs> one of my favorite animes still to like to this day is like Interstellar, um, five five five, five 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 five. Yeah, five, that five. is a fantastic album based on Daft Punk's uh, album. Yeah. Um, yep. I remember yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah. I've been a fan of them for like a while. And she cosplay as uh, Stella um, one Halloween. Uh, <laughs> yo, my and you know you can't just go buy that mm. out. There. So <laughs> yeah. my wife, uh, my wife was a, a fashion major and um, is a fashion designer, um, along with doing many other things. But uh, so she literally made the costume from scratch, and, the, like, and then I the I took cardboard and constructed the guitar, and then. Yeah. Up so it had weight to it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah, it was insane, man. Oh, like, my, um, my young weed years, right? <laughs> yeah. well, I mean, so I mean, even to this day, I mean, I've been watching anime. If you come from our generation, I, I started with uh, with, with Pokemon, if you really think about it, yeah. right? Awesome. Right, when that when that when that first hit the, the United States, and you know, my tastes have evolved from there as well. Um, but you know, the way I actually discovered your dad was actually through an anime right i'm sure he knows where i'm going with this but i started watching samurai shampoo right um and that's where i discovered you know Nuja Best, you know may he rest in peace shing fat john and everybody and um it was uh through Nuja Best that i eventually found your dad and i've been i've personally been listening to him literally like ever since even when he, he just did uh uh the the dmv song recently where he oh. just Oh, wow. you talking about a uh, proud with uh, Odyssey and a uh, 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 priest and nomad? Are you talking about that song or is it different? Uh, no, oh, it's the other one. The, the, the with, live right, live from the DMV. Yeah, that's so, the one. So yeah, you know, you. let me tell you, I'm, I'm actually having a really hard time. I'm kind of fangirling right now. So <laughs> your, your dad does have fans. I just want to throw it out there. Your dad is that cool. Oh, I mean, um, I'm taking her. I've taken her on tour with me. Uh, so she, so she's seen firsthand. Yeah. All and right. Shot. All right. When I when I put out uh I don't have it here, but the um the past is always present in the future, she was on the cover. So she was oh man, what was it this was three years ago. So she was nine. No, it was twenty seventeen. So twenty seventeen, right? You were that's, nine. That's the West Coast tour, right? Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> when I took her on tour, um, and even when I would do conventions like these anime conventions and things like that. Dude, she'd be at the table signing. Like, yeah. uh, you know, the the couples, signing covers and, yeah. yeah. That, that's pretty funny. Because when I did go back to like animes after like that, um, that one posted, like everyone, like still I've been getting like this signed some of them. And I'm like, oh my yeah, God. Yeah, yeah. So when cool. we go back to the cons, yeah. That, <laughs> that, that is awesome. Like, now, I miss it's, conventions. It just, it's like yeah, seeing everyone cosplaying. It's just like, oh, I remember. I see everyone. Like I know all of those animes. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually really big into uh to my hero academia right now. Um, oh yeah. yeah. Did you see um did you see the cover that we did for that one? No, no. If you got that out there, make sure to link it. We can put it all over. I'm I'm ready, man. You know, like yeah, I told I'm you, I'm waiting. already a big fan. Yeah, you did um, a cover for that one too. The uh, you say run. Okay. All right. And uh, Serenity. So uh, I know you uh, taking a look at the the kind of past history here. Looks like you mainly play on the Switch. Do you play anything else? Um, 
I mostly play sometimes on my phone, like uh, like the new game that's like really popular right now, like on Android and PC, like Among Us, like that game that's been uh, like blowing up recently. Like um, I see uh, that very. I much. have like, I, I have very know. mixed feelings about Among Us. Um, yeah, I enjoy I it. Like it's okay, <laughs> but I don't really want to mess up any relationships with my friends on it because it's like, how could you? <laughs> like they always say that. I'm like, I'm sorry. I hate being imposter. I'd rather be a roommate. Right. <laughs> it's annoying, but like, it's okay. So for for those of you who don't know Tortuga here with us, uh, he, he's he's also my cousin, um, and I don't think we would think twice about just destroying each other in that game. Um, we're we're so, very competitive. So just to loop everyone in, whenever there is like family game night or friends game night, and uh, Pixel and I tend to be on the same team, or else we'll just kill each other <laughs> if we're on opposing teams. But when whenever we're not on the same team. For whatever reason, the family, myself included, we just go against everything Pixel. <laughs> so no matter what, it's it doesn't matter if you win, you will eventually win internally if Pixel loses. That's the that, way we play all games so, when it comes to. So I'm funny, all right? I want to throw this out there. I am funny. And whenever we play Cards Against Humanity as a family, they make it a point to make sure that I don't win. <laughs> Like they do everything in their power. I can have the funniest card that has ever been played, and they still will deny me that point. Oh, yep. no. <laughs> there, there's been times where we're like, "Oh, this looks like something he put down. That's not gonna win." And there Good you time. go. <laughs> and now, um, do you? Uh, no, sorry. Did you also play like any uh, any other games? I know we have right Super Smash Brothers, some of the Animal Crossing. Uh, is there anything else that you're playing? Um, I'm just now get, going back into like the Breath of the Wild franchise, like Zelda franchise, because like when I first got the Switch, I I was kind of like trying to get Breath of the Wild, but then like I kind of rage quit the game because I was <laughs> new to the Switch and I'm like, what the heck is going on? But like I'm trying to go back into like the Hyrule Warriors franchise because I've always liked that one. Okay, yeah, yeah no, it's, um, I'm pretty sure it's still being developed by Koei Tecmo and Bandai Namco. Um, they've always been great with that, you know, going back to the Dynasty Warrior series, the Samurai Warrior series. Um, you know, they done spin offs with like uh, Dynasty Warriors and now with uh, the Zelda one as well. Um, I'm a very big Zelda fan, um, and Tortuga is as well. Uh, I'm a little more on the hardcore side. Uh, Breath of the Wild was definitely great, but it does have that. Um, I think that learning curve in there, because uh, it is such a massive branch off from the series, uh, the, the original formula, basically. Um, but definitely give it a shot. It, it is more like hidden lore. Like the game itself is really short, so it really does make up for it within like the many uh, dungeons, uh, com- shrines, the shrines, the shrine, yeah. right? So the shrines make up the majority of like the dungeons and the side quests will give you more among the lore. Uh, so if you do like reading into things like that, um, it is definitely a, a great place to start. Yeah, like uh, I was watching like a walkthrough on like the entire like game and I'm like, ah, so this is why I kind of quit. Because <laughs> like I was like I was still like growing up at that time. So I didn't really understand like the complete formula of games. I just played them for fun. So I'm like, oh, this yep. requires strategy. Yeah, yeah I'm out. Yeah, it does. <laughs> said, I yeah. mean. I still rage quit over the weapon durability, so like, uh, don't don't worry from that from that aspect because uh, it is definitely something. Uh, uh, again, it, it just takes time, but it is absolutely a fun game. And uh, you know, we do have the sequel to the Hyrule Warriors coming out, the Age of Calamity. Um, oh, yeah. There's a demo out for that. Were you able to get your hands on that? Oh yeah, like um, like in the last on uh, the live stream yesterday, I already told like some of my subscribers that I was playing that. So like. I was playing it earlier today and yesterday, and I'm like, yes. Yeah, she seems to like it a lot. Yeah. yeah. Plus, like the new like character, which is like an egg guardian. Like I like people in like in the comments of like these other videos keep on calling him like BB8 2.1. <laughs> <laughs> That's relatable. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, like that game, like the uh, Hyrule Warriors game. I'm playing that a little bit of Minecraft. Like I'm trying to. I it's like it's okay. Like. It's not. It depends on like what it's platform you Minecraft, play. Minecraft uh, Dungeons. Minecraft Dungeons and just right. Minecraft in general, because like I want to like play it more on like a computer other than like a console, because it like you get more freedom in the PC because right. you get like mods and everything. You know, if you do like that, I know Tortuga's already gonna say something because he always has to have a comment. But 
<laughs> I like the concept of Minecraft, but I personally could not get into it. Well, I'm not that creative to begin with. Um, but another alternative that I was able to find was actually No Man's Sky, which oh has God. very, very similar, uh, you know, concept where you you gather the the ingredients, if you will, and then you create your structures. And you know, they have like pre-built things where you don't have to do it like block by block. But definitely an alternative with uh, uh, very similar functions of if you ever seen Elite Dangerous, where you can go like planet to planet and things like that, um, with a little bit of a story behind it as well. That's cool. I don't think I've ever heard of those games before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, No Man's Sky actually it, it, it got a really bad start uh, when it first came out in 2016 um, because it promised so much and it underdelivered. Um, but they have been continuously working on it. Uh, the, the developer Hello Games uh, they did put a lot of work in. You know, all free updates ever since then, and the game is actually really really fun. Mm. Yeah. yeah, check it out. What's another game that I want to get? Oh, um, it's a game that we played on the Wii U. Um, Super Mario 3D World, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's another game that I'm planning on getting like once it like released, I think, next year. I think that's when they said. Switch, yeah. Yeah, because it's like for the 35th anniversary, I think, for um, yeah. Mario. Oh, so. uh, yeah, I think I know what you're going to talk about. Did you, um, I mean, are you guys planning to get the other the 3D Marios? Uh, it comes with, what is it, Mario 64, Mario Sunshine, oh, and um, the 3D Odyssey. thing? Right, that's the one. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, we might. I think the last time I got one of, the, uh, one of those anniversary um, games was... Uh, when they did uh, Street Fighter Two um, Ultimate Edition for um, the the uh, 30th, Switch, yeah, thirtieth like yeah, anniversary. 30th anniversary. That's what we have. So, but yeah, I mean, I think we're just gonna wait this uh, to um, to get the the new one next year. But um, yeah. I mean, you know, we'll see. We'll <laughs> yeah, see. I hear you. my the only thing that I'll probably throw out there for you guys is that this particular game is being released on a limited run. So mm-hmm. after March, it won't be available. So. Uh, ah. Uh, yeah, so just just to throw it out there, just in case. Um, now, uh, <laughs> now with uh, now with, with streaming itself, do you guys do you guys live stream or do you record it and then upload later, or a combination of both? It's a little bit of both. Like, um, like I do like every other every other week I do like a stream and then like and then like some weeks I just like um record it and then like just upload it. That's mm-hmm. really what I do. Yeah. Yeah, that's mostly what I've been going through. It's like one week, I just do a regular upload, then I do a stream, and then sometimes it's a daddy-daughter game night stream, and then sometimes it's just a regular stream. Yeah, and the daddy-daughter uh, game night streams is uh, it's usually like twice a month um, at the most and stuff, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, but it's, it's a lot of fun. It's been really cool because um, a lot of the people who tune in, it's a good mixture of people who already subscribe to her channel mixed with like... Uh, like family and friends, and then um, then some fans of mine and stuff uh, will come check yeah. it out. And then sometimes, it, um, I sometimes in some streams, I actually put like my friend code in the description so like and people they can play actually come. Yeah. Like on the Mario Kart, okay. stream, the yeah, Mario that was Kart, awesome. Yeah, the Mario Coach, the Mario Kart stream on my channel, um, it, it did really well. Like at least a couple of my my subscribers and dad subscribers, um, yeah, all joined in. And stuff. Yeah, was so that really was really cool. awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I don't think I've been good. And I mean, really good at Mario Kart since like the Nintendo sixty four. Uh, oh wow! I, I think that was it for me. I, yeah, yeah. And so I had a really good streak. I think when we when we first got it, I used to play it a lot. Like literally, get off of work, she wouldn't be <laughs> home from school yet, and like no one was home yet, so I'd get in an hour before everyone walked in the door and then it was just like i never touched it like no (laughs) (laughs) i don't even know that right and so yeah i mean but like these days because now she because of school and stuff like that yeah um, schooling from home um you know we just try to limit it like friday through sunday and stuff uh you know which is difficult when you're trying to be a competitive gamer as well because you don't really Mm -hmm. compete against people who like they wake up you know, yeah, like cereal here. Yeah, like you know? literally, whenever I play online, I get cooked. Like, yeah. like it's like whenever I just play like with family, it's just like I cook them, but then right. I get cooked. So and some of like, our friends, of course, too. You know, you know, but yeah, but I mean, but part of the reason I think um, I've really started getting her more into gaming um, was 
the funny story is I was I just came off a tour one year. Um, I think it was like maybe 2015. I just got um, came back from Japan and um, and then I was supposed to get ready to head out to South by Southwest um, in Austin, Texas. And uh, I, w- I already talked to someone about doing a gig. But, you know, South by Southwest is one of those things where you, you end up coming out of pocket a lot of times just to get there and all of that. And so, you know, I got I just got paid from the stuff I did overseas. And I'm just, you know, it, all there. and I'm looking at the kids, <laughs> and I'm like looking at the looking at her and I'm just like, you know what, let's go to the store. So we go to Best Buy and uh, uh, while yes, we're at Best story. Buy, um, I had a quick, a uh, quick business call real quick. So as we walk in, I tell her, I'm like, all right, the game right here, you can set up play the game, see how you like it, and then let me know what you think, right? And so I'm standing behind her pretty much the whole time just watching, you know, doing this call, like 15 minutes or so, while she's literally giving all of these kids the business. (laughs) 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 Oh, the good old days. And and it's like, I don't know how many kids, man, maybe like five or six kids there, and she's the youngest. She's not even the oldest kid there. And it was embarrassing, man. Like, I feel bad <laughs> for these kids and their parents. Like, yo, you're failing them. You're failing your kids. <laughs> Come get them. This is bad. Yeah. And so after watching that, I was like, yeah, I just on, just on the fly, I just bought the Wii U. Like, we already had a Wii, um, but I had been considering upgrading. And, and that was part of the reason why I went there. I was like, going to check it out, see what the price was like, and see what we could get. And after watching that, I was like, yep, go ahead and pack it up. <laughs> and then I proceeded to you know, South by Southwest, the folks I knew down there. I was like, yeah, I ain't coming. <laughs> I ain't oh, coming. boy. And we just basically played video games all weekend, you know? Yeah. So, like, like, this is before I was even, like, on YouTube. Like, so I didn't know anything about the game. I mm-hmm. didn't research on it. Yeah. I'm just like, okay. I guess I just moved. I'm like, hmm, what are these controllers doing? I'm like, oh. Okay, yeah, and she, she figured it out, and and it just got really bad for everybody else, real fast, really fast. I was like, hey, come get your kid before they start crying, man. Like this is, <laughs> this is bad. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, it's like ever since I uh, like some conventions, like when there is an adult that's like played this ever since like the first version came out, and it's like, hey, can I play with you? And they're like, oh, sure. And then like yeah. a couple of minutes later, they're in twelfth. And I'm in first. I'm like, right. That's I get. I get it. Hey, that that you know brings tears to my eyes. That's yeah. mate. I'm proud for you, man. Like that's yeah. that's insane. Um, because it's true. You know, uh, we brought it up on the on uh, the episode a couple of times where, um, that there's just certain games that we can't even consider getting, especially if they're so multiplayer heavy. Because you know, there are people putting 10, 12, 15 hours a day, yeah. and you just you know. To go to a competitive level, it's almost near impossible just because, you know, for whatever reason, you know, we just can't put in the same amount of time to be yeah. good at the game. So, like, I get it. Responsibilities. That's the reason. Yes. <laughs> you know Responsibilities. Like, yeah. Like, I mean, listen, man, when I was, you know, I used to talk big trash when it came to Street Fighter. And then it wasn't <laughs> I uh, with Street Fighter 2 and it wasn't until maybe like three years ago where I started uh, well maybe a little bit before that because Marcus D had like a actual arcade uh, console in his home okay. so I would go hang out with him on the west coast before he moved to Japan um, you know like I'd get some Street Fighter in at his place and so he was playing semi pro and I mean I could get him at least one out of three rounds right like and this dude's playing semi pro so for somebody who only plays like five, six times a year at at most at that time, to be able to get this guy who's playing online winning money, give him some go. I'm like, hey man, look, I ain't doing too bad. But as mm-hmm. a, as a kid, dude, like I I mean, you know, I don't support kids gambling, <laughs> right? <laughs> you didn't hear this, um, but man, that was that was my hustle, man. I had uh, folks who would come over. Um, would come over to the house and they'd bring um, their trading cards, whether it was comic book cards, basketball, football, base, whatever, right? They bring trading cards through sometimes comic books, and we'd play for cards. and And I'm telling you, man, I, I'm big, people coming through with books like this, leaving with like three cards, you oh, know. Wow. And um, and I used to mm-hmm. let people pick my character, like like pick who you want. Oh, matter. sounds I familiar. And if you picked, if you picked uh, Blanca or E Honda. I will play you without looking. 
So I would literally, yeah, I would literally, I would stand like the entertainment center be here. I would stand next to the entertainment center and uh, and look at them and basically. Because with those characters, there were certain moves. It's like, you know, with Ehan the throwing hands. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm going to figure out where you are. If I can't see you, <laughs> just, it got bad. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing with Blanca with the electricity. So, uh, so yeah, man, I just, but that was back. Like, I mean, of course, um, that game and uh, NBA Live, like, uh, Live uh, 95, that was another game where you had like a little sweet spot in the court where it's like, mm-hmm. it didn't matter who the player was. It could be a player who, Never shot a three pointer at all. <laughs> but they got 10 threes in the game, you know? I remember <laughs> so, that. Yeah, man. But um, yeah, man, I, I definitely it's now it's tough because it's like, you know, I'm a full time musician, I'm a business owner and stuff. And the only time like I really get uh get time to play games now is just, like with my kid, unless I neglect some responsibilities mm-hmm. <laughs> and then go play a game. Right. Yeah. And so you- Whenever you like yeah. you play Street Fighter nowadays, it's like probably just like Ryu or like Chun Li. Yeah, and that's yeah, why he I... hits me with the legs like. Oh yeah, get that <laughs> that's footwork. The, that's that good the old one footwork. game that he can probably beat me in all like twenty four seven. Yeah, but Street Fighter <laughs> is that that's that's a game where uh, I definitely hustled some people out of their laundry money back in yeah. the day. <laughs> I so like I I feel you, man. I'm I'm definitely right there with you. Right. Um. Now, with uh, with everything that that's going on, uh, I know you did mention like Twitch and anything and everything. Um, uh, PC is definitely the way to go. Um, I don't know how you're doing it now with with a particular capture card um, on the Switch. Um, but what are your uh, I would say uh, streaming goals uh, moving forward? Uh, honestly, I haven't really put that much fun into that, but like mostly just. Trying to get like really good quality videos, like trying to make sure there's like no like glitches or anything. That's why I'm. That's why I'm glad we got like the Elgato. Like what's his? I think it's like uh, the Elgato. Yeah, the capture card. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Like the first capture card we got was recommended by one of my friends, and like I was like, oh, but like okay. Yeah, yeah, and it's funny. Like we, like I said, we had a person come through to consult, and he gave us the list that we needed. But then, um, you know, like when uh when she started saving up some money to kind of put, um, you know, purchase certain things, uh, one of her friends had recommended something for, and, um, it was cheaper. So like, she was just kind of trying to do it on her own and sure enough, we get the thing. It didn't work. And so like, (laughs) um, and then we did some research and, and we saw the Elgato and then go, and then I refer back to the list that the guy sent us. And I was like, yep, that's what he said to get. Okay. So, (laughs) and so, yeah. And and we just Uh. basically, uh, just you know uh, just kind of went from there to get everything but yeah yeah, i mean definitely i the great thing about what she's doing is more than anything she's just kind of more concerned with the quality um than she is you know i mean of course who doesn't want subscribers and lots of activity and stuff on the channel but overall she's just uh seems really interested in just figuring out how to make it better like every time we do it that's that's a very important quality to have yeah. Yeah, like if the game's not popular and it's not getting like a lot of views on like people's like videos, I'm like, yeah, I'm not gonna do it. Right. Like that's what, <laughs> like this one game that um I thought was kind of popular at the time because I, I like the people that I was subscribed to were just like like posting it nonstop. So I'm like, okay, let me try it. Yeah. And then I did, and then I checked. That like, was yeah. uh, Ninjala, right? Ninjala. Yeah, yeah. I still play it to this day. It's just like it's comfort. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. not better than Splatoon though. Yeah, that's so the other thing that's interesting about um, like she's starting to become really kind of like business minded, like because, again, you know, we own our own business and stuff and we do a lot of uh, consulting, mostly like creative entrepreneurs. And um, and so she, you know, like she tries different things out to see what's working and what isn't. And then like certain things, of course, you know, we give her advice on and stuff, but a lot of it's kind of like trial and error. And then she realizes, okay, when I do videos for this particular game, the engagement's a bit higher, right? Um, then she noticed when we did the live stream, she was getting closer to her goal of hitting the hours she need to get unlock more features on YouTube. So, yeah. so she realized, okay, maybe I need to kind of shift and focus on these games a bit more and shift and start doing more uh, live streams and yeah, stuff. Yeah, like so it, it's great to see how she she's 
figuring it out, right? Like having, like she's having fun, but she's also like, um, she's also very, like she has a business mind at the same time. So it's kind of great, uh, great to see, you know, we'll go ahead and take yeah, credit you. for that. But uh, yeah, like, you know? literally, like a couple weeks ago, like after I posted like a stream, like literally like one of my friends just emailed me. It's like, hey, my little, my younger sibling oh, starting yeah. a YouTube channel. She's consulting now. Literally. Oh, all right. That's what's I've really gotten crazy. like four emails like from like one of my adults, like not just adults. <laughs> wow. No, I'm saying kids and adults have been reaching out. Uh, adults have been hitting me and my wife up, like, "Hey, we have like a young person in our family trying to do what your daughter's doing. Can can like we link them up so she can advise them on?" And then like you know, one time like a uh, a family friend hit us up, and I was just like, "Give me your email. I'm gonna have my daughter email you." <laughs> you wow. <know? laughs> it runs in the family. Right, right. So I told her, I was like, "You're learning the family business already." You know, like, yes, I kinda... finally put my little tie on right get your tie and uh, <laughs> ready right like, yes. yeah. <laughs> no but, but i mean but that's great because you know uh, on top of just making the content you know networking is also a big part of everything yeah. so to get a handle on that plus the business aspect um as well it, it's all just all beneficial i mean that way you you're doing something that you enjoy but on top of that expanding your horizons from that from that aspect mm. yeah so, so I, I get it, man. Um, a, anything you guys wanted to, uh, you know, talk about any uh, future projects or anything along those lines? Mm. Let you go first. Honestly, I, nothing really. I'm I mean, like, she's twelve. She's like whatever, I, whatever the day brings. <laughs> whatever the day brings. That's that's fair <laughs> enough. Um, you yeah. know, and and of course, uh, we, we definitely got to put it in this. Uh, I got to throw it in here for you guys. Um, but you also have uh, Artistry, uh, the podcast yourself. Artistry, yeah, yeah. Art. Artistry is a, it's a podcast with uh, my wife and I um, through our business, Substantial Art and Music, um, where we basically, we just talk to uh, full-time creative entrepreneurs. So, um, you know, we just uh, recently, we interviewed Shingo too, um, you know, good friend. And uh, um, earlier this uh, year, we... Um, we interviewed um, Verbal from M Flow, um, uh, my man Kokai, Grammy nominated artist, uh, Adrian Jones, award winning professor from Pratt Institute, um, and just so yeah, so so and uh, Mason Lieberman as well from Tencent, and um, yeah, uh, so tomorrow's episode is uh, featuring Marcus D, yeah. um, and, uh, and then I think we got Funky DL coming up as well. And, nice. Uh, yeah, and so we're already gearing up for next season. But the main thing, the reason why we do it, um, you know, it's 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 less. I mean, it's of course we're interviewing. Like we have like a t shirt. This is my friends are dope. Like right, and um and and we mainly talk to like people we know or have relationships with. Um, to just kind of remind people about the importance of tapping into your network. Uh, mm -hmm. Like a lot of times people are actively trying to reach out to people they don't necessarily know well. And we recognize that we're blessed, too, that, you know, not everyone has the type of network we have. But understand, like our network didn't start this way. These are people who like we've known, like, for example, a good friend of mine, Naturel, who had his own line of Puma some years ago. Um, yeah, he's an extremely successful artist, but I've known him since he was 10. Right. Like we go back to like, I mean. I, he was a kid, like trying to rap with my nephew, you know what I mean? And so, you know, but like maintaining relationships and, and growing together, when you get opportunities, passing it to people in your network and vice versa and figuring out how you can come up together. Right. And um, and so that's kind of what the, the podcast was birthed out of and really having these conversations with people to talk about their journey and how they got to where they got. And try to find like gems in there to kind of pass on to other creatives who may not be um, looking at the world this way. Right. Or understanding that um, this one path that you think you have to take to get to where you're trying to be, um, that's not necessarily the only option you have there. And, and so all of these people we talk to have really unique journeys, um, you know, um, like Tadassim, uh, Tabassum Siddiqui, who we interviewed who's a fashion designer, um, who makes sustainable fashion. I mean, her talking about, you know, being a Muslim woman and doing modest fashion 
and talking about living in other countries and working for companies where she's the only female out of a company that has nearly a hundred employees, right? Like, um, and, wow. and just these yeah, that's pretty crazy. experiences and trying to find your voice and your truth and your path to success, um, in situations that sometimes aren't, are not necessarily the easiest to kind of grow in. And so, um, yeah, man, it's, it's been a lot of fun. It's, uh, it's definitely a passion project. As you guys know, podcasts mm-hmm. are, are, you know, it's tough to, it's tough to, to do, especially when it's not necessarily lucrative out the gate, right? It's just mm-hmm. got to do it because you enjoy doing it. And and right now that's, that's what it is, man. We, we love it. We made some investments to, to get the equipment we needed. And, um, yep. and it's been, dude, we've been having a ball doing it. And the, the people who are familiar with it, the feedback we've gotten has been tremendous. You know what I mean? Like we didn't foresee it being like, we knew it could be something special, but the response that we got, like, you know, right. yeah. Like, yeah. People, man, it's, it's been really inspirational to the the few people who've heard it and that's what we were going for. So, you know, it's a blessing, man. Like we're excited, you know? All right. Well, I'm going awesome, to hear man. that. Uh, all of that uh, obviously will be linked in the description. We'll also be tweeting that out. Um, so make sure you catch Substantial. And I and I I, I see, uh, again, I'm fangirling really hard here, guys. So I apologize. Uh, oh, but do you have back there, looks like you got the cover of Spiritual State? Yeah, man. Yeah. The, on one side is Spiritual State and on the other side is Samurai Champ Luke. Yeah, <laughs> you know, know, that's, that's, I'm, and I'm like, eh, it's okay. Right. <laughs> yeah, Demon Slayer is dope. I like Demon Slayer. But yeah, yeah, man. Uh, I was gifted. Uh, I mean, obviously, I'm on the project. But um, when I went out there and uh, around the time the album came out, um, the label gifted me a copy. So, I mean, I've never even opened that copy, man. It's, uh, you know, it's obviously special for a lot of reasons. But yeah, um, but yeah man, yeah, it's, uh, it's classic, you know. Okay. Well, hey, you know, uh, Serenity, you know, Substantial, thanks so much for taking the time to jump on the episode. Um, Tatuga and I are going to uh, just go about regular episode. Uh, you guys are more than welcome to stay. Um, or if you want to drop off, however you prefer, we're just going to go over some gaming news, opinions, and things like that. Uh, so you just let us know. Yeah, we, we actually got to get ready to go because we got to uh, hop on another family call. But, man, yeah. it's been a, a pleasure, dude. We had a lot of fun, you know. Thanks All right, no. A pleasure, honestly, was ours. If you ever want to jump back on, whatever you want, just set us yeah, up. Uh, right. More than happy to have you guys. Have you guys? All right. Yeah, this definitely, is fun. man. Thanks, My thanks again. Y'all have it. <laughs> awesome. Right. Thank you. Right, take it easy. Right. Have a good night, guys. All right, you too. Peace. Peace. All right, and that was uh, Substantial and his daughter, Serenity, uh, who joined us for an episode. Again, thanks so much uh, to them uh, for taking the time to jump on here at Two Guys One Level. Um, you guys I'm, I'm telling you guys if you could see this video i'm just i'm just cheesing really hard i've been listening to him for um for well over 10 years now so kind of crazy to see um you know even back then his daughter was probably just born um around the time i started listening to him so to kind of see her uh, being her own person and then jumping into the gaming world uh it's definitely great to see so uh so thanks so much for for listening for joining guys uh now to kind of move on to uh the more standard kind of things here cyberpunk 2077 all, all right, right let's not start with that that's gonna take the rest of the episode you don't know that you last... don't know me you don't know me we'll, don't talk to me we'll like give that you, we'll give you the last two minutes of of the episode of this <laughs> recording i guess that's gonna take such a long time <laughs> holy moly uh, all right well, well let me start with this for you then um so apparently Shadowlands, uh, the World of Warcraft expansion, has the highest pre-sale of any expansion in World of Warcraft ever. Yep, yep, I saw that. And well, what's, in- what's interesting about that, well, on top of that, Shadowlands now has a release date of November 23rd. So only really uh, less than 30 days push out than um, the original release Right, date. and now does that fall under the six-week uh, market from when that patch was available? I want to say yes, but I don't remember the exact date of pre-patch. I'm sure I, I don't remember Google either. It, but I want to, it's, it's either the six week mark or the seventh week mark. So uh, I'm sure they tried, but it, I would have to do a quick Google search to see if the math uh, checks out. But it's still really, really close to what they were going to do. But again, with this pandemic that's going on, it is affecting so many games, mm-hmm. right? 
So it's kind of hard to kind of like get mad at them from not holding up to old traditions and things like that, even though it um, wasn't like an intentional thing. I'm sure after a while they were like, oh, that happened twice, three times in a row. Let's just keep going. But um, on top of that, Blizzard honestly thought that because of the delay that they put out on Shadowlands, they didn't think that they were going to make the sale numbers that they pre- um, predicted or were projecting for. And they actually shot over everything that they put out. Um, That's crazy. And, yeah. Like they bear, like people did request refunds, but not as many as they were expecting. And that actually caused them to meet the numbers um, and surpass all other um, expansions, which is amazing that so many people, because essentially that tells you that there are new people joining. Wow. An already expansive game that there are new people jumping in with Shadowlands, which I think it's an it's a great expansion to jump into because that level squish makes things so much easier. Getting up to 120 was very, very daunting and exhausting. So having the level cap back to 60 is is it feels so much better to play through. Oh, um, you know, honestly, I thought the squish was just for like like pre patch, just so we could like test some numbers. I didn't know no. it was like a global event in the game, or but you know, like yeah. a, like a like an actual mechanic that they were implementing. Right. Yeah, no, that they they did that because they didn't want to keep increasing the uh the level the five cap. Five levels, five levels, five levels. Yeah, yeah. It, um, it was getting it was starting to become such a grind. And World of Warcraft has always been a grind, but we're getting such younger audience now that that level of grinding doesn't keep people returning to the game. So making it easier, and having a, such a, a more digestible formula, it it actually brings people, especially with me, because I I got tired of playing the game. So having such a low level cap compared to what it used to be, I'm enjoying the game. I am leveling almost every class minus rogues. because I, I've never liked rogues. but <laughs> And that's been with every game. But neither here nor there. Shadowland, I can't wait to play the expansion to come out next month, right around Thanksgiving time frame. So those people that took a week off and, and didn't get to enjoy um, Shadowlands, they'll have Thanksgiving break to kind of fall back on. So that's pretty cool. Speaking of Thanksgiving, um, Black Friday, which is now tied to Thanksgiving, mm-hmm. um, Newegg has announced that from today, um, anything that you buy from Newegg, there's going to be certain items that are going to be labeled price protection. Meaning that if you purchase a game, uh, an item on Newegg with a price protection tag and that item goes on sale before or on a Black Friday, you are going to get a refund for the difference on that item. That is an awesome business thing to kind of get people to shop at Newegg. Um, I'm down for that, man. Because, I mean, how many times have you had to like return something because you found it cheaper somewhere else? So, yeah, well, most of the time, if you find this cheaper somewhere else, it's not really honored. You don't really honor uh, another corporation. Some businesses do, like Best Buy will, like Amazon, I think, corporations Walmart. Do. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, but if it's within the company itself, like if you buy something on Amazon and then two weeks later, that same item goes on sale, you can just email Amazon customer support and they usually uh, send you the difference. That's pretty awesome. Um you know, I, I was actually on Newegg. Uh, for anyone who might be potentially, and this is not sponsored at all, but I have the Fractal Design Meshify C uh, in black, and it's actually on sale for like $60 right now. Um, when I got it, it was 100 It's a great case. Uh, just want to throw that out there. What's the case for? Uh, just a computer, just a tower. Ah, got yeah. it. Yeah. Um- uh, uh, real quick, I apologize. Uh, the Steam Halloween sale is live at the time of recording this. Um, uh, that does end, I want to say it was November 2nd. Um, so I think tomorrow is going to be the last day. So hopefully if you do hear this, you are able to participate in that. Uh, and if you have, that. maybe. <laughs> well, uh, if you did purchase something through the Steam sale, please reach out to us on Twitter and let us know what your purchases were. We're uh, at two guys, one level on Twitter. Back on the, I have to go on rapid fire. Um, so this, I found very interesting. WWE, right? The wrestling corporation yep. has put out a notice to all their wrestlers to shut down any third party contracts. Meaning if they are streaming on Twitch, which a lot of them were Paige, I'm sure uh, a lot of people have, have caught her channel uh, once or twice or probably subscribed. 
she complied with the WWE and she said, I may not agree with, you know, their business decision, but I am going to comply. Um, so she officially said goodbye to all her Twitch subscribers and and closed down her channel and so did a lot of other WWE um wrestlers. So So they were doing whatever they were doing on Twitch. Really? The WWE just stopped just asked them to not do anything with any third parties. Correct. Yep. That's kind of insane. Think about of the backlash they just got on their latest game because it was so riddled with bugs. I I I don't know, man. Um, uh, but that went into effect. They were given a notice, and the last day to do that was Halloween, I believe. And yeah, those that complied did. Huh. Interesting. <laughs> Um, you know, I, I gotta agree with that. I don't really agree with that, especially I, they're, you know, they're not, I don't think it's out. So, you, you know, whatever. I've never been a fan of wrestling, but, um, I, I do think that's kind of crappy that they're doing it that way. Um, uh, you know, we, I kind of mentioned it earlier. I really don't have much, uh, as far as like gaming news for myself on here. Um, but we, we have another contender to, um, uh, to for a show uh i don't know if you saw here but um netflix is actually working with uh, ubisoft to make a live action assassin's creed series yeah i saw that so pretty pretty uh excited for that especially seeing the success of the witcher if they put that kind of love into it um we can definitely get something out of this um i didn't hate the movie with michael fassbender in spain i didn't love it but i didn't hate it there were some things that i i wish they had done differently like the animus and um some of the lore i think just felt off um but i would be excited to see if however they do it whether it's like per episode which i think would be cool um or per season where we get some of the stuff that uh, that we've wanted to get in the games, you know, like I, I would still love to see like Feud with Japan um, or, you know, they had a comic that was like in, in, you know, the cold winters of Russia, you know. So I'd be curious to see how they would do that. Um, but, yeah, that is also something that uh, that they're working again directly with Ubisoft um, to do some storytelling here. So we'll see what we do. Yep, another another thing coming out that I have to add to the backlog. I can't even keep up with the shows that are coming out. It's <laughs> so fast now. Like, uh, I think we spoke about it, but Dungeons and Dragons is getting a television series, and that's in the works now. Uh, judging by your face, we may not have had this conversation. We yeah, have Hasbro, not. <laughs> Hasbro has confirmed that they are going to back a uh, Dungeons and Dragons kind of like television series. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be live action animated, but if something is in the work, something is cooking. And yeah, I'd be curious to see how that's going to happen. A lot of people don't know this, but there was a Dungeons and Dragons cartoon back in the 80s, early 90s. It wasn't great. It also wasn't bad for I mean, it was it was an 80s cartoon, right? You have what, Thundercats, He-Man, like a whole bunch of other stuff that was just yeah. poorly written and poorly drawn out but it was still comical and enjoyable as a kid and just put into perspective the very first encounter that the party has in this animated series is with tiamat so (laughs) uh tiamat's been following me in dungeons and dragons for a while now so i'm just saying if if, to put it into further perspective you don't play Dungeons and dragons tiamat is a goddess so just evil yeah not like um what's that game that you like that's about gods all the time god of war not like that you're not as strong as a god fighting gods no no you're like a normal person like you and i all of a sudden having to fight yeah like, you're like you know whatever the class right exactly um that's uh that's definitely exciting though um i i did not know about that at all but you know what we did mention it though that there are certain things that we just don't talk about um so we can get the full uh reaction right on the channel so <laughs> uh, so that makes sense um <laughs> uh, we we do have to um just very very um minor thing here is with um i completely lost it never mind um oh <clears throat> i do just want to touch on one minor minor quick thing here uh for those who enjoy from software uh they did recently you know, acknowledge that their game Elden Ring that they're working on with George R. R. Martin is still in development. Yeah, it was kind of interesting. They just tweeted out like 
uh, a picture of the Elden Ring and didn't say much else, but basically enough for the fans that were itching for an update to say, all right, it's still on the radar. So that was cool. Yep. Yep. Um, and then uh, Riot also working on a, a single player League of Legends game that I want to say they announced last December if I'm not mistaken. Um, and they said that sometime this December, they're going to give us more in regards to like the lore and what's going on with the game. And that is set to release sometime in early 2021. They did. Yeah, they did announce on via Twitter, the locations that they're going to basically include in this game. Yep. Um, it is going to be heavily around the League of Legends uh, lore. And I can't remember off the top of my head, there was like three major cities uh, that it's going to include. But the one thing that I do want to note from their announcement is that this game is going to reach consoles. Um, They said that the biggest hurdle they're currently having is getting it ready for the next gen consoles. But they do plan on releasing it on current gen, which isn't going to be a thing after two weeks from this recording. And then next gen. Um, So... Which is is very exciting, and I want I kind of want to just jump the gun here and say it'll be free to play because everything they've been putting out so far has been, but it's um yeah it's something that we can expect to receive at home. Yeah, it's actually you know really really odd. Uh, this is kind of the second big uh, League of Legends news we've gotten this uh, this year. You know, first of their them offering a mobile version with the upcoming uh, Apple phones. You know, the ones that was just recently released uh, and then now kind of this. So I'm uh, kind of curious to see what Riot has up their sleeves with this. You know, what's also interesting with Riot in general, I didn't realize this, but they they created their own publishing label called Riot Forge. And that's actually the publishing label that's going to be releasing the Ruined King and uh, the single player game that's coming out to consoles and PC. Yep, and then uh, to kind of put it in perspective for you guys, apparently it is going to play... Um, in a similar fashion to like uh, Diablo or uh, Dark Shadows Genesis, where it's going to be kind of isometric, um, so and top down was, heavy. Yeah, okay, that's um, pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, but that's basically how the the multiplayer game plays. Yeah, so, makes sense. I mean, yeah. Um, you know, there's something I don't know if you saw, but um, there's a movie uh, coming out um, called uh, One Up. Did you Did you hear anything about that? No, sir. Well, apparently it is going to be uh, a comedy about an all-woman sport, each sports team. Um, and it looks like it's going to be starring Ellen Page as the coach. Um, and there's uh, other people in there, but just I'm, I'm a big fan of Ellen Page. But we I'm do have to nod my head and smile. Um, yeah, I can't even, she was oh yeah, Inception. She was uh, that girl that was with Leo, the younger one. The one who was better at making mazes than Leo? Yeah, I think that's the one, the architect. Yep. The architect, which, you know, fun conspiracy theory about her role in Inception, um, that in fact, she wasn't in fact a student to the uh, his father-in-law. She was actually his therapist who Inceptioned herself into Leonardo's dream to kind of get him to join the real world. Huh. Well, so thanks. Go ahead, go, <laughs> go ahead and rewatch the movie with that. <laughs> With Thanks that for that. <laughs> um, yep, not like I needed anything else. So, uh, uh, God, this guy's movies. It was the same thing with uh, people. Well, people tried um, to convince me that the um, Shutter Island was a different ending than what really happened. But no, that the ending's pretty solid. There's no ambiguity uh, in my eyes. I fell asleep to Shutter Island and woke up to everything on fire. And that's exactly how I'm going to remember that movie. <laughs> um, all righty then. <clears throat> um, what about. Um, so <laughs> uh, we have a Call of Duty Cold War, right? The next um, uh, Call of Duty game going out there. Mm -hmm. uh, they're doing. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. We. Um, we make fun of Call of Duty a lot on here, um, but they they do have. Uh, all right, <clears throat> Call of Duty Cold War is going to be even bigger than Modern Shut Warfare. <laughs> <laughs> Call of Duty Cold War is going to be even bigger than Modern Warfare in 4K Ultra RTX mode. Oh my! Oh my! And you're doing it wrong. <laughs> And the, not I, innovation. I think that I think the funniest thing to me is that this is at launch. So um, 
right now they it looks like it's going to be uh 250 gigs of storage just for That's like cold war you're basically giving up half your hard drive if you own a PS5 for this game, if that's like something that you're excited for. Yeah, uh, yeah. So now I know this isn't as great, but apparently if you aren't going for the 4K experience um, and just looking for, you know, we're talking with max refresh rate, FPS, um, then it'll be uh, 175 manageable but uh, another note that i want to make just to swoop in on your call of duty story dr disrespect <clears throat> actually came out it was very 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 upset recently because he did not receive um an invitational code for the next call of duty game um which a lot of streamers did receive and he was excluded from this code and he went off to say that as he quoted it the purple platform referring to twitch was the reason that he did not receive an invitation so basically they um, ruined his image in like their in Activision's eyes that basically prevented him from receiving an invitation, which is a very bold statement to make, which makes sense at the same time, because why wouldn't Dr. Disrespect a such a high valued streamer in the gaming community all of a sudden not receive a code, um, an invitational code? It, it doesn't make sense to me. And it, it would make sense that, you know, Twitch is the reason behind that yeah that is that's i mean i i i'm very new to dr disrespect like just this year um but i i think he has a point because one there's just there's just so much um hush hush with everything that went on and it it paints it paints both of them in the bad light but only one of them depends on things like this for you know virtually their their livelihood I agree. It's hopefully once this NDA runs out and they're able to let it all out, it might be 10 years from now. We'll receive that with a copy of a Navy SEAL mission. Um, you just won't know until all that is out in the open. Currently, it's everything's up to speculation, but it's just I, I feel for the guy. Like I said earlier, he, yes, he's a millionaire, but this is his livelihood that they're messing with at the same time. So exactly. If, if Twitch can actually justify ruining someone's career, like I don't know what could, would have to happen for them to think that any of that is justified. But obviously, they they obviously can because somehow, some way, Call of Duty said they pulled the plug on on Doctor Disrespect. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but he's the most watched streamer, regardless of the fact that he's on YouTube instead of Twitch now uh honestly I, I i'm not too sure i know he's up there with um with ninja um and i think he's actually more than ninja um so you might be right i just i just don't know for sure gotcha um so uh one thing amd officially announced their new card um and they stated that it does perform better than the 3090 one thing that I did not enjoy about the reveal is that they referred to NVIDIA as the other competitors or the competitors in the market. There's only one other competitor in the <laughs> GPU market. Like hiding yeah. behind that statement instead of just calling. I, I would have had so much more respect for AMD to just call out NVIDIA and say, we're flat out better than NVIDIA. And here's the numbers to prove it. And literally every category across the board. Uh, AMD had higher numbers except for power usage. It was actually lower than what the 3090 was putting out. Uh, power usage, like, like how, oh, oh, wow. So that, that makes it better even so. Right? Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Wow. Every other number was higher except for power. Well, and that and that's a good thing, just to not confuse people. That is a good thing. <laughs> that's, wow. Uh, you know, it, it, might, it might be time. You know, everyone kind of fighting to get the, the 3090. The, might have to go over to amd um i would personally wait for some actual benchmarks uh because a lot of those again are tested just like we said with the the consoles they are tested and you know specific testing sites you know clean sites um but i would and am still very curious to see what numbers these these can pump at home 
I personally am waiting for Alignus Tech Tips to go ahead and run the numbers because they will be one of the first ones to receive both cards if they don't already have the 3090, which I think I saw a video on it, so they definitely do. Um, so that's definitely what I'm going to be waiting for because I've said it many, many, many times, all of these components are tested within their own environment and it's designed to be perfect. Like it is a cool room. There's nothing getting in the way. It's going to run as perfect as possible to get the numbers that they need to call out the competitors on their um, reveals. So when it's in a different environment and like an actual home rig and it's just with a different other components, we'll get an actual real feel to how that's actually going to play in our pockets or in our um, rigs. Yeah, that's that's pretty insane. I mean, the, the price alone is kind of crazy because we have the 6800 coming in at like um, uh, 579 and uh, 649. Um, and then we have the... Um, the 6900 coming in at 999 so that's probably the beefiest cards that they've put out to date uh, but again still very very curious to see what uh what we got going on with this because uh, amd you know ever since they came out with i want to say it was either the 580 or the 590 they have been like actual competitors um you know you're getting a lot of similar they were always just a little weaker but for the price difference, uh, especially for someone who was casual gaming, you really wouldn't have been able to tell the difference. Um, right. But now with uh, with you know them um, coming out with this uh, their six thousand series, uh, comparing it to Nvidia's three thousand series, um, you know they might actually have a, a good standing here, and that price difference might be the what. AMD needs to really kind of outsell NVIDIA at this point. I I agree. I think these cards are actually going to outsell uh, the 3000 series that just were announced. And actually, they just started coming out and they're starting to be restocked. So I'm excited. I currently, uh, again, based on the numbers that were shown, I will definitely move over to the 6900 XT as my next card upgrade instead of NVIDIA, just based on performance alone and price cut because it's $500 cheaper than the 3090. Yeah. And it's, 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 it's a competitive equivalent. Yeah. So, um, all right. Well, thanks so much for that. Uh, you got anything else on your end? Um, cause if not, yeah, I, I got, have to. okay. I got two more things. Um, Baldur's Gate three pushed out another, uh, set of updates. Um, Again, most most of it is just thanking the community for doing what they can and a lot of funny stories on how people are playing the game. Apparently, 39% of the players romanced Gale, the wizard that pops out of the rock. I don't know if you got that far into the game. Uh, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And another fun thing, apparently a lot of people killed Gale the first time they encountered him because he... <laughs> popped out of a rock that no one was expecting that's so, hilarious um they kind of fixed his in, his introduction into the game and ever since then he's uh, he's now the most romance character second to uh or second place would be shadow heart the uh cleric that you first recruit that's hilarious honestly um you know there was also something i saw um uh oh, what is it um there's a uh uh I haven't gotten this far, but apparently you can jump into what's called Underdark. Did you do yep. that? Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> so apparently uh, <laughs> a good number of players died the first time they jumped <laughs> through because no one thought to cast a feather. Featherfall. Yeah, Featherfall. I apologize. Yep. Yeah. Um, uh, I think the number was 70% of people uh, died on their first time jumping into the hole. See, what's not fair about that, you don't know that you're jumping into the underdark. It's just like it's a hole and you're like, let me just jump there, down there to see what, you know, what happens. And if a lot of people who watched the developer um, build up or reveal prior to the release of the open beta, oh, I'm sorry, the paid beta, they went to the area and they said you have to cast Featherfall in order to not die from jumping into the Underdark. Mind you, that's not the only way into the Underdark. I found another route. Um, I was navigating through like a ruined temple and I actually blew up one of the walls that was in this temple and I walked into the Underdark from there. So there are many, many different ways to get into the Underdark and it is its own world 
it's it's crazy the amount of detail that they put into it. But well, isn't it even crazier that for early access there's still that much uh, content available? Oh yeah. Um, like I said, I already beat quote unquote beat the early access because I reached the end of it. But I I probably did fifteen percent of all the things that you could do in um, Boulder Skate Three. Huh. Um, and I realized that I didn't actually announce what the update was in the last Boulder Skate 3. They focused a lot of it on fixing the cinematics um, throughout the game. There was just a lot of bugs and, you know, people talking without moving their lips or their body parts were not actually connected to, to them or joints were disjointed, things like that. So they fixed a lot of cinematics and they redid a lot of it. Like there's um, one encounter with a tiefling playing, I believe uh, it was a lute. And you can actually you encounter her and she asks you, you know, if you can help her with the song, you can actually help play the song. They changed that cinematic. So to kind of give you another chance to uh, replay that if you haven't like they just redid so much that it looks like a completely different game um, based on the cinematics alone. So they are taking the feedback from the community. They are putting in the work. So it's going you know, better than when it first launched. So if you still haven't touched it and you're thinking about it, it's probably a good time to kind of, you know, dip your feet in as it were. Yeah. I got to jump it back there. Cause I, I do want to, I still have like our, our save that we started together. Um, and then, um, I got mine with my fighter. Um, I don't know. The casters aren't, aren't there for me yet. I, I think I'm going to need different casters. Uh, Warlock just doesn't do it for me. I'm going to tell you right now, Casting is very difficult in Baldur's Gate. It doesn't feel as smooth as I would have liked. But at the same time, I'm not sure how to go about making it smooth to begin with without um, capping your, the type of spells that you can do. Because if you tackled it like you would with like Diablo 3, the wizard there, you would be limited to almost what, like eight abilities. And that's you obviously can't do that in a game like Dungeons and Dragons. Right. There is. There's dozens upon dozens upon dozens of spells that you would have access to eventually. You can't just limit yourself to eight. It's just, it wouldn't be fun. Hmm. Um, all right, what else you got for me? And the last thing that I have, Hogwarts Legacy will in fact be single player only. Oh, that's the, the PS5 one that we saw? That's the everything. PS5 does not get every single game to themselves. All right. Um, all, all right. All right. I didn't mean to trigger you. All right. Um, <laughs> well, we're talking about. Um, the, yeah, the, the Hogwarts game that was announced recently. Okay. Awesome. So single player only. That is interesting. They could have a lot of fun with some multiplayer there. But um, I, I 100% agree. But they're going single player. And they did say that it, the setting is 1800s, so right. pre any Harry Potter movies. Um, so if you were kind of expecting to run into any Harry Potter characters, you won't. You may run into like some older ty- uh, names that were in there. Um, so we'd be, I don't know who the headmaster would be in the 1800s. It'd be cool if it was the uh, that Slytherin it's, guy. Yeah, it's, it's going to be whoever was before Dumbledore, because remember, they live pretty, pretty old. That's that's fair. But yeah, that's that's all I had. I'm actually bummed that um, Hogwarts Legacy will be single player. I, I kind of am too. Hoping. I mean, I wasn't hoping for like an MMO, but I mean, right. you could make multiplayer so seamless where someone could just jump into your story. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, but whatever. Um, <laughs> what, can, what can you do? You know, um, I, I'm going to kind of end this episode here. I know everyone is expecting this uh, from me. Um <clears throat> So Cyberpunk 2077 was delayed once more. Um, It has been delayed uh, about three weeks uh, to December 10th from November 19th. uh, And I am super bummed. There's really no other way to to explain it. Um, I've chatted with people. I brought it up in in our personal group chat a couple times that I honestly did not believe another delay was coming. And I... I was shocked. I was genuinely shocked. Um, I, <laughs> I, Bro, I just want. Cyber, I just, what? Cyberpunk didn't even believe another delay was coming. <laughs> so that's unfair. So you know that was from the PR team. Um, the the actual person behind it actually came out and like apologized and gave like a formal personal explanation, not on the Cyberpunk Twitter. Um, but unfortunately, it, it's delayed. Um, you know, some people have brought out like uh, 
a couple funny things out of this. You know, like uh, I wonder how many publishers are releasing uh, a sigh of relief if their game is coming out in November. Like, you know, I know Watch Dogs right now, even though it just came out like at the end of October, um, and then they have Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I know both of those games are, you know, sleeping easy. Uh, oh, um, right. You know, that no, little- not that. Oh. I don't I don't want to I don't want to steal the rant away from Cyberpunk. I can cannot believe I completely forgot about this. I'm glad you said Ubisoft. Ubisoft messed up royally. Oh. Royally with uh, a Watchdog Legions. Uh, I um, heard it was like I heard it's pretty bugged. Well, yeah, I mean that's expected with any game. That, that should not be news anytime a game comes out. But especially this Ubisoft. this was <laughs> especially Ubisoft. Don't do this to be on good level too. <laughs> <laughs> um no but so you know how you know Watch Dogs, right? You've played right. one and two. Oh, I, and I think you, I know what you're talking about. You're talking about Watch Dogs too, right? No, 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 oh. Legion. And when you scan no, no, people, probably, okay, never mind, never mind. Continue. When you when you scan people, it gives you a quick background like of what they do for a job, yep. and it's usually something really funny about that character that kind of makes you chuckle. So with this the same algorithm and mechanic is in Watch Dogs Legions, and you can scan people before you kind of recruit them to kind of get a feel for them to see if that's somebody you want to join your legion, right? Mm-hmm. So this one person on Twitter uh, scanned an NPC, and it said, pediatrician, and the comment was, recently broke up a relationship with their patient. Bruh. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> yeah. So in case, you know, you, you're not putting like, what's the big deal? A pediatrician is a doctor that primarily focuses on children. Yeah. And to say that you broke up a personal relationship as a pediatrician with your patient, he alludes to the fact that it happened with a child. So big fat no, no on Ubisoft part. And it's one of those things that's like, how can you let that fall through the cracks? It's not that difficult to say. Do not link, you know, comment B if profession is A. Yeah. It's Yikes. not that difficult to program into the game. It really isn't. So that is a huge oversight on their part. And a lot of people were like, what the hell is wrong with Ubisoft for letting that into the game? So, sorry, mini rant over. Get back to Cyberpunk 77. Uh, well, before run. I do that, I'll throw another one in there for you. Um, you know, Watch Dogs 2, you played as Marcus, and uh, he actually was not asked to return in Legion. Um and he was actually kind of hyped about it. Uh, you know, his name is Ruffin Prentice. Uh, was the voice actor. Um, he actually stated that he would have loved to reprise the role. That is one of the favorite things that he's ever done. And when uh, Aiden was announced, he was like, you know, you know, maybe there's potential. Um, but he just, he just wasn't, um, uh, just wasn't invited back. Um, I feel like they did kind of the like same thing with Morpheus. So, uh, but we'll see, you know, I mean, these games could be updated. Uh, maybe this will, throw something i love marcus as a character uh so to kind of see him get his own mission maybe not even if he's not playable um like like aiden was or is uh but we'll see um and yeah so Tortuga, thanks so much for that uh you uh i always love uh when ubisoft does something like this <laughs> um but on top of the delay it's super bomb um i just want to do a couple rapid fire things here the developers were getting death threats. That's not cool. Doesn't make any sense. You can't be this mad at something you have not had. You know, it's not like they sold everyone the game. Everyone downloaded it and was playing it, and then they took it away from you. That's not what happened here. Um, trust me, I'm probably one of the bigger um, addicts of this game, and just just don't set death threats. I can't believe we're still talking about this in 2020. Um, Something, again, uh, on the funnier side of this delay, because I have to find humor in this somehow, is that uh, Cyberpunk is actually getting other games delayed. So, yeah, since, <laughs> yeah, since Cyberpunk has moved to December, now that November is in the clear, um, you know, like Path of Exile was getting a pretty big expansion. Uh, they actually delayed that from December to, uh, to January. Um, yep. So... Yeah, I think that's kind of funny. Uh, gonna kind of meme itself there. Just one last thing on this. I know it's been talked about, um, you know, it's beating a dead horse here, but um, with this game being delayed, it it it's super super bummed out. It's a couple weeks. We can we can make it. 
but there was like a conference call with the developers that a transcript was leaked and it almost and it sounded and it didn't almost it sounded like they are also not certain on the December release either. Um, everyone was blaming Stadia. I don't know if you saw that. Everyone was blaming the Google Stadia. It was not Stadia's fault. It was not Stadia's fault. You are correct. But people were blaming Stadia uh, when it first came out. Um, the game is ready for PC. Uh, they consider Stadia a PC platform. Uh, the next gen is all set to go. It seems to be the current gen, Xbox One and PS4, are the biggest culprit, um, which is really interesting when you think about it because the uh, the games were announced you know, we're talking about like 2012, 2013 um, development began in 2016. That's not, that's like three years after the console release. So and we had no inkling of next gen then. So it's really surprising that the game that the, the generation that the game was designed for is the one that's giving them the most trouble. Yeah, I think I honestly think they just focused so much on making sure that it was next gen ready and Stadia ready that they kind of let the um yeah, but Stadia open. was Stadia was so recent. That right, that's what I'm saying. Like they they just focused a lot of their power into making sure that it worked. Once that thing happened, that they just never got to the current gens because they were they were like, oh, we should probably focus on the next gen. And I get what you're saying. This game was already being designed for the current gen. But think about it this way: you're designing a game for a console that's out there right now, and you you have what you have, and then all of a sudden you find out that there's a new generation coming out. You obviously have to start supporting that and copy everything that you have now and shifting it over to the next generation and then start working from there. At that point, there is now a split in manpower. Mm -hmm. So So, uh, look, I'm super, super bummed. Those have death threats. The game will come out. Um, I mean, you know, we're not the only ones affected on this. You know, even CD projects uh, stock or the share price fell about 25 percent in the last two months. So, yeah, I mean, I'm sure to go up after release, but look, everyone's hurting on this and I keep cutting you off and I apologize. But hey, the game's coming, guys. Eventually. Um, And I I just want to, you know, finish it with something that I saw on Twitter, which makes perfect perfect sense. Don't be mad at the developers. Be mad at the company. Right. It's it's a it's understandable that you're mad and upset that the game's not coming out when they said that it was be mad at CD Projekt Red not at developers working to get this game out when they can. It's not in their control. Right. I mean, this that that kind of order is not coming from the de- the developers aren't looking at this saying, yeah, now we should delay this. That's coming from higher up. Um, right. And one, again, just kind of get away from the negativity of Cyberpunk for a moment so I don't start tearing up here. Um, apparently, there is... Uh, an Anthem update uh, that's seizing uh, major Javelin design changes on this. Um, so these people are doing everything they can to bring this game back. So, well, <laughs> yeah, no, they are they are trying. They want to get their money's worth out of this one. Um, so feel bad for anyone over at EA and Bioware suffering. Um, and then uh, a little bit of a fluff piece here. Um, there's apparently these... Uh, these uh, a Capcom themed pocket synthesizers um, by uh, Teenage Engineering. Uh, they're called pocket operators, and they literally just, you know, they're like synthesizers. They make music um, and they fit right into your pocket, so you can just kind of make music. Um, I think they're themed right now. So uh, there's like a Street Fighter one and a Mega Man one. Awesome and random, but awesome. <laughs> uh, um, hey, man, that's that's it for me this week. Uh, oh, wait, no, I apologize. One last thing. Um, apparently, there have been a, a couple researches researchers um, looking into the Oculus Quest 2, uh, that forced Facebook login, um, and uh, <laughs> they bypassed it. Uh, they huh. were, yeah, they were able to get access to, well, they were, they gained uh, root access to the Oculus Quest 2. That's just that's just lazy writing. Uh, yeah, apparently. Um, yeah, so I, I guess uh, the company itself is uh, the XR Safety Initiative uh, or XRSI. Well, that's letters. Um, they are a nonprofit organization dedicated to promoting privacy and security in uh, XR. Uh, so we're talking anything that's virtual reality, mixed reality, or augmented reality. Um, 
so they uh you know they've been it's been verified uh and they're currently working to quote gather assurances to protect the individual who discovered these methods of jailbreak gotcha yep so that's uh that's all we got Uh, that's all i got bro (laughs) <laughs> I mean, it's it's quite a lot. We we covered a lot in this episode. We did, um, but yeah. So as always, I want to thank all of you for hanging out with us yet another week. We really, really, really appreciate all the support that you guys been giving us. So thank you all for hanging out with us. Yep, we're gonna link uh, our uh, contact in there. We're also gonna put uh, the contact for uh, Substantial and his daughter Serenity. Big shout out once again to uh, Substantial and Serenity for joining us on here, and I'll let uh, Tortuga sign us off. Oh, I mean that's basically it. Thank you all for hanging out with us. Um, check the description below for those links. As always, I'm Tortuga and I'm Pixel, and this was Two Guys One Level. <laughs> <laughs>